Hey, my name is Christoph with Click, and today I would like to show you my most complete ClickSense on Minikube. So that version does also include Keycloak as an identity provider and also gives you access to APIs using a JSON web token. So let's have a look. Before we get started, I would like to explain briefly what we will be doing here. If you haven't set up Vagrant or VirtualBox, check out my other video where I'm explaining those steps. Uh, I'm considering that you have both available, so we're ready to go. And actually, we will provision a virtual Ubuntu Linux, and it will contain uh, Docker and Minikube on top. Then we will launch ClickSense for Kubernetes, and we'll configure Keycloak as the identity provider locally on Minikube. And finally, we will also create a JSON web token to get API access. So you would start on GitHub, actually going to this repository and download it as a zip. And there is a folder contained, which we will now extract to somewhere on your hard drive. In my case, I'm picking my documents. Then you open a command prompt, navigate to this folder. So CD and that folder name. And there is a file called vagrant file in that folder that tells the hypervisor what to set up and what to run. So all you have to do is to do Vagrant up and the rest will be done automatically. It picks VirtualBox as the hypervisor provider and it's going to set the machine accordingly, putting two virtual network adapters in and giving it like six gigabytes of RAM and so on. So and then it starts executing actually um, a boot strap shell, a docker shell, uh, and all those go sequentially within about five to ten minutes. I'm fast forwarding this here. It continues installing Minikube and it's also installing Helm plus Diller. And then it deploys uh, free packages actually. It starts with an NFS provider that stands for Network File System. This is needed to persist files locally. Then it will deploy a MongoDB chart and it will deploy ClickSense from the stable repository. For that purpose, we're adding the repositories to Helm and then deploy it from there. So this is the screen where the Vagrant script ends and it will take another hour and a half approximately to load and pull all the images. So you do Vagrant SSH to bash into your new Linux and then you do kubectl get pods. Or you can even use the command watch kubectl get pods which repeats that command every other second. And if you keep this open for a couple of minutes, I'm again fast forwarding this. So within an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the latest, you will see all the pods are running. So now that very moment has happened. So from now on, I will use putty to bash into my new Ubuntu box because it is the much better terminal emulator. So the login is Vagrant, password is Vagrant. And let's make sure that all the pods are running again. Yes, they do. Now we want to deploy Keycloak. So let me show you that Keycloak folder that is created here. There is um, a shell script for installing Keycloak. This creates a Persistence volumes claim for Postgres. Postgres is the database that Keycloak uses to keep its settings. And after Postgres is ready, I'm also deploying Keycloak. Again, this is fast forwarded. In reality, this takes up to 15 minutes again. So Keycloak should now be ready. Let's have a quick look into its log file. It takes another about two minutes to become really responsive on HTTP. So now let's try to connect to the cluster. ClickSense has HTTPS uh, and 
that address 192.168.56.234 and if I try to log in it will actually tell me that it has no hostname configured so let's set it up now. Keycloak is running in the back that means we are able to connect to Keycloak admin console um, using the above URL. So the password and is admin admin and when we go in you will see a couple of clients but we need to set up a new client that acts as the identity provider and I've created a shell script for this as well that's the one you see now it will take a little longer when you do it the first time so I'm fast forwarding here again it does a couple of things which we will review in a moment and then it asks if I want to upgrade my click deployment so I can say yes here and it will make the changes in the deployment so you see here that it pulled a secret it pulled a password for a user and what has happened in the back let's refresh the admin console a new client has shown here it's called click login with all the necessary settings it has got a read ID it has a secret and we also set up another user called API and this user has got a password click 1234 and that all has happened here in that setup process by the way you see that the click identity provider pod has been deleted and that way has been restarted so if I connect now to my cluster it knows the identity provider and it comes back and logs me in as admin and that is because I already was logged in in the admin console of Keycloak before so if I do API v1 users me I see I got a Keycloak ID under which I was logged in and I can do console now and enter the site license So I'm now the only tenant admin because I'm the one who set the license. So now watch this last piece here at the end of the create of the shell script that we executed. This is a JSON web token. And if I used Postman, for example, um, and uh, I've reserved a variable here where I can put this JSON web token in. And if I call the API on the host slash API uses me it also impersonates me but this time I'm the click API user and if I refresh this actually I'm a new user to the scene and if you plan to do more with this API it makes sense to also give this API user tenant admin rights and this shell script also exported this key into a file called API user underscore JWT TXT and you can use also curl if you're more familiar with this to call an endpoint when you present the token in the bearer authentication and click response to me so how did that magic happen actually there are two keys in this folder which you can also replace with your own if you like so a private key and a public key of course so this public key is used in the clicksense yaml here to uh, verify the validity of the json web token and um, i also have a little node.js application which creates that token which signs it so this is using the private key and it uses the argument that you pass in here as the user ID and the rest is pretty much static so that key identifier is used here and it's issuing um, an internal API key for a particular user so that way you can actually call endpoints of the not yet officially released ClickSense on Kubernetes API
that is it. This sets pretty much a good standard for a local installation of ClickSense on Kubernetes with an identity provider. And it's, it was probably a little fast if you've seen this the first time. There is another video from earlier this year where I'm a bit slower and explaining more the details so you'll note the differences. And yeah, if you like this video, please subscribe and I'll keep you posted then. Bye bye.